and welcome to Album Pickups for October 2019. Now it's been a little while since you've actually done one of these as uh, there wasn't really much luck finding albums in uh, September. So uh, for October, initially I thought there were going to be two albums I was going to be picking up. The one I actually did and then one which unfortunately has been postponed. And the one that's postponed has been a new album by Mayhem which is Damon? Demon? It's spelled Damon but I've heard people pronounce it Demon. Which uh, I think is, is out streaming now, but was meant to be out in sort of mid to late October, but has been pushed forward until early November, I think. So I'll be waiting until then to get a physical copy of that. So I've just got one album this month, and it is the brand new album by Swedish uh, progressive band Opeth. And this album is called In the Cauda of Venenum. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I mean, this whole series could just be... Um, Adam poorly pronouncing things in other languages. Uh, and it's a Latin for Poison in the Tail. And uh, as you can see by the transition there, I did just have to look that up. Um, yeah, this was a album which uh, I heard when the singles first came out, and I thought it sounded really, really cool. Now, unlike some Opeth fans, I've actually really enjoyed since they've sort of gotten rid of the sort of slight death metal aspects of their music and sort of have gone purely like prog metal slash prog rock. I really liked Heritage, for example. Uh, I didn't listen to the next album much, but Sorceress has been okay. Uh, but this album for me is a bit more of a return to sort of it's kind of the heavier style, but with the sound of the timbre of the new style. And this actually is the special edition version I've got, and there's one particular reason for that. And that is that this album is actually released in two languages, English and Swedish. Now, uh, as you can tell by my pronunciation of absolutely anything that isn't the bare most easy sounding basic English, uh, that I am definitely not bilingual. I can only speak English. So, uh, normally, you know, you'd think that someone like me would want to go for the uh, English version, but for me, music always takes the precedence over the words. And when I first heard the uh, single, which is... I want a better look at the English one. Which is uh, Heart in Hand. And uh, go on, let's try and pronounce, uh, let's try and pronounce this one in uh, Swedish. Schildertat vet vad hansen går. If you can speak any Swedish, uh, do tell me how badly I've just mutilated your language down below. And when I first heard that uh, on the on the single, how they got the single on on their YouTube channel is that the first they they play it once in Swedish and once in English, and it just sounded like it was supposed to be in Swedish. It sounded it's, it's clearly clearly it was written in Swedish because the language is beautiful and it flows really well in this music. It's like how you hear, um, for example, um, I quite like Mozart's opera The Magic Flute. Uh, but I absolutely just do not like it in English. It feels wrong. I prefer it in its native language of German. It just, it just, it sounds correct. It was clearly written for that. And uh, the same thing here. So uh, when I went to the shops, all I could find was the English version for £9.99 or the special edition version, which has both on it. So I spent an extra couple of quid. I got this for £13.99. And to so this version actually comes with two CDs. We have the Swedish and the English. And the only version I've... Um, put onto my iTunes and have my iPod that I want to listen to, it's a Swedish version, because like I said, despite not knowing a single word they're saying, um, it just flows, it sounds correct, like this this album I think is clearly meant to be in Swedish, um, and if, if, if you're someone like me who can get over, you know, happily not understanding anything that's being said, then I think you're rewarded, it just sounds so much better, it flows, it's beautiful actually, on this album in particular, and um, Something I really like actually about uh, Michael Ackerfeldt's vocals is um, when he's singing straight, just without like the screaming and the growling, he, he has a very, it's a very crystal, very clear voice um, that just flows really nicely and the production value on this is quite nice as well. It's still going for that sort of slightly vintage sounding style but without sounding rough it sounds nice and clear. Uh, the picture on the back here was used, actually animated in the, um, in the music video and you can see the members of the band there. In, a in the form of a giant scorpion for some for whatever reason. So this album is a concept album, and from what I can gather, once again, this is the downside of listening to it in a language you don't understand. Uh, looking by the imagery, I think it's something to do with like the Swedish royal family, maybe, or some sort of aristocratic thing. Maybe it's maybe it's a, a, a tale from Sweden. Maybe it's completely made up. I'll have to look that up, but you know, this isn't a review, this is just an album pickups, and uh, honestly, I would recommend this album, and I sincerely recommend, even if you have to pay an extra couple of quid, going out and seeking out the Swedish version, or at least listen to, listen to the songs, um, listen to them back and forth in English and Swedish, and see which you prefer, but for me personally, clearly this album should be listened to in Swedish. And uh, yeah, that's uh, my album pickup for this month, so hopefully I'm really looking forward to picking up Demon slash Damon uh, next month. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, please like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.